guys we're sitting here waiting for the truck to show up it's currently 750 we are impatiently waiting hopefully they can find the house okay but we're just kind of hanging out waiting so we'll keep you posted want me to park over there um why don't you back down the driveway Okay guys, this is our table. I'll give you a look here. Everything looks good so far. I know we're supposed to go through and inspect it. Make sure there's no damage to anything. I don't see any. Boxes look good. Five by ten. Kawiki Shop Pro. We'll take some more video of this later tonight, but for right now, I've actually got to get back to work. So I just had to get this unloaded. Now I'm going back to work. And tonight we'll start unboxing and hooking everything up. I'm also gonna see if I can turn it and if it will fit the other way right here but it's kind of looking like it might live right there so we'll see anyway we got it i'm excited we'll catch up with you guys later all right guys i think we've got it set in its final resting place i've pulled a measurement from the leg on the table to our expansion joint in the concrete on both ends it is square because i'm anal that way I, I like where it's sitting. The screen will be right here. I've got to be able to load plate. We tried turning it and putting it in this way. I didn't really like that because it was too tight. It made it too tight to walk through. This still leaves a big walkway. So this still leaves plenty of room to walk around the machine. I'm still going to have to get material in here to put on the rack. So I do like that. There's still a good walkway. I don't want the boys putting material on the saw and banging into the table. I feel pretty good about where it's at. I was going to see if I could push it a little bit more this way, but I still want to be able to put a 20 foot stick of material into the iron worker. And the edge of the gantry is right in line with the edge of where you would slide the material in the shear. So now. All that's left to do is we got to start unboxing everything, start reading the directions, because that's what men always do.
So we'll go ahead and time lapse this so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing. And we'll give you updates along the way. Let's do it. Okay, so I just want to show you guys what's in here. This right here is our monitor. Got a box here that's got the all the control cables, looks like. Some kind of board in there. Looks important. Hopefully that's a thank you card. Hey, no BS, that is a thank you card. I was just being a smart aleck, but that is legitimately a thank you card. And this is a zip drive with the flash cut software. Installation and training info, machine drawings, and machine manuals are all on that baby right there. Okay, then we have our two jugs of plasma green. It's like we got some of these little plastic rivets, some Allen wrenches, ohmic rings for the plasma, for the hypertherm, it's got all the cut charts, okay, a box of 85 amp cartridges, and this new plasma is the Powermax 85 sink. And the sink is, well there's a chart right here. So these consumables are all one piece. They don't have three pieces to them anymore. And they actually make a little reader that you can get for your phone so that you can screw it in and it will tell you what the life is that's left on the consumables. I haven't ran them, so I can't really tell you guys whether I like them or hate them or anything like that. So it's gonna take some time to make my mind up on that. The screen is a little different than my other 85. McCoy's over here cutting the zip ties off. Throw all the garbage in the, that box. Okay, so it's kind of cool. Everything comes pretty much pre-wired. We'll be able to throw our monitor on that. Our computer's down here. And I'm gonna have to figure something out for this. Some kind of a case or something. I really don't like that it's exposed so that it can get all dusty. So I might figure out some kind of a cage to put on this. You want the fan to work so that it can keep it cool. You don't want it overheating, but you also don't want it full of dust. So I'm gonna have to brainstorm on that. You can see all the wiring is pretty much ran. They've zip tied it here. You just gotta run it the rest of the way. Here's our lead for the torch. So we'll cut that and be able to drag it over here plug it in. I'm assuming this right here is the head for the torch and then we'll just swing it over here and drop it in there. I am impressed with the way everything looks. It, it looks to be pretty well built. Uh, one of the things that made me want this type of table, the gantry on this table is different than most burn tables. If you notice the gantry it's a little bit beefier. This is solid tube so it runs the long length of the table instead of the short length. It makes loading plate a lot easier. We'll have to come in with the forklift and load it from this side, but you can move the gantry clear out of the way. The other thing they do is the slats don't run this way, they run this way. So the gantry pushes out of the way, and then when you load plate, the plate slides across the top of these. Now I'm sure they're gonna get all buggered up and the plate's not gonna slide like it does when they're new, but it will make it easier. Some of those tables, these slats are like spikes. You have a heck of a time sliding plate across that kind of a slat. So I do like that. The other reason I opted for a Koiki is because you can get all the parts on this machine here in the US and you don't have to buy them through Koiki. And they openly tell you that. They give you all the part information and they say if a part goes bad on you, it makes it easier for you to swap the part out if you can get it locally 
and so they give you all the information for the parts and then you can you can buy the parts through them but it will cost more or you can find a parts dealer that sells automation controls and stuff like that and then you can buy it through them save yourself some money get the parts quicker so on and so forth so those are the reasons that I went with this table I like the way that the frame is built it's solid this is all quarter inch steel the table does weigh almost 4,000 pounds so it is heavy I've moved a lot of equipment in my life with a forklift I don't think I've ever been so nervous as I was moving this one and I think it's just because it's the most money I've ever spent on anything and it's an investment but I was scared to death unloading it okay so we're gonna get back to unloading this these are our covers that go on the end of the gantries see they don't have a cover so those are our covers so we gotta pull those out put those on put the screws in there's our ground cable for the plasma so we'll continue to unbox this and get everything hooked up We'll go from there. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know how. Okay, so we are to the point where I don't really know what else to do to get it set up. So I'm going to get this flash drive downloaded onto my computer so that I can read the installation and training info. And hopefully that will tell us everything else we need to do. I'm going to run and grab my laptop. We'll bring it back out here. I'll pull this up and start reading through the instructions. Okay, guys, quick update. It's the next day. Me and Coy were out here last night until about 1 in the morning just trying to get everything wired up so I'll give you guys a rundown of what I've done you can see that the gantry has moved so we did we did get it manually moved there is no water in the table yet but we did get everything wired up here so obviously this is a mess right now and if I left it like this it would give me Tourette's so I, I do have a plan for how I'm gonna clean it up I ordered one of those cord bridges on Amazon I'll be able to lay the cables in there and then a top goes over the top of it. It also helps you to avoid tripping over it. So we're going to get it all cleaned up. We'll zip tie these up. We don't want the plasma cable in the same tray as the other stuff because they say you can get interference. So we're going to separate those two. The cord bridge that I got has different channels so I'll show you guys that when it gets here. It'll be here next week. So the power supply is underneath there. All the cables are routed where they need to go. We did run a ground wire and tied it in over here to this beam. That beam is about the best ground you're going to get because it's tied in through the footings and then to a U for ground. And I also have two ground rods hooked to it. You can see this is the plasma setup. There's a control box here that has the control wires coming from the computer. Everything there is hooked up. I did get my street elbow 45 on the plasma there. So I like how that works. It's not in the way. The dryer's running, the compressor is aired up. So now we've got the hose dragged a country mile from the house to fill the table with the fluid. So we'll do that right now. Who did the concrete? Just don't look over there. 
There's a double nut on these so you can lock them. And once I get it in place, I want to lock them down. Oh. Well, didn't you say somebody said that they were... We're level, so now we're just going to fill it with water. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what we're working on now. This is just something I'm using as practice, but it's also something we're going to use. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. What it is, is it's it's got kind of a, it's like two rectangles butted up together. It's a little more narrow on one section. And then I've also taken and added the business logo onto it. Just for fun. I just kind of want to see what it's capable of. So it's ready to cut, so we're gonna try it. We already did a dry run and it looked good. We're figuring a lot of stuff out, so we're gonna see how it goes. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna take it off dry run and then I'm just immediately gonna try to cut and see what it does. All right, well, that was a good practice run, but it didn't work out. We didn't have the plate centered where we needed to and zero was off, so we are doing we're having our usual growing pains, which is normal when you get a new piece of equipment, so. Oh well. It was good practice run. We're gonna go ahead and try this again. Hopefully it works out this time.
definitely learning as we go. Definitely learning a lot. So that one actually cut out really well. Actually, holy smokes, that's pretty impressive that it's able to cut that thin and still keep it together. That, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but that, the distance right there between those two is about a sixteenth of an inch. So we're going to clean this up and then we're going to try and break a little shelf for the computer and the mouse that will hang right here we'll hook on here that'll give us somewhere to set the keyboard and the mouse I'm looking into getting maybe a tool cart to put them on I guess the benefit to that would be then you don't have water splashing on your keyboard and your mouse but as long as you keep it out away from it I don't know that it will matter so it it was just something I thought would be cool to try so we're gonna break this and we'll see how it turns out <laughs> Hopefully we got enough room There's some tight brakes on this one It's gonna be tight We're gonna go a little over two or like two and an eight mess with our star on our logo but that's okay so we'll break it we'll break it and then we'll break it on that side it's gonna be interesting Check it with a square. <laughs> We're gonna have to tear it apart to get it out. Really? All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update on where we are with the keyboard tray. I thought I could get away with breaking it in this break, even though it was a little bit wider than 24. I think it was 20, I think it was 26. The reason I thought I could get away with it is because those wings extended past where the braking was. So everything that needed to be broke was still 24 wide. The problem is there was one there was one break that I had to get right up against where the wing was and if I stuck it in there then it would hit these springs. I didn't want to risk damaging my break. I just decided I'm going to have to cut the wings off on the side. So I'll give you guys a look at what it looks like here. I thought the logo turned out pretty good. So I was able to get it broke. This was such a tight break right here that I actually had to finish it with the hammer. It was, it was open just a little bit. So I ended up clamping it to the table and just smacking the backside with a hammer and it brought it right in parallel. So sometimes you gotta do the best with what you got and that's what I did. So I think it turned out, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I can actually scoot the keyboard up and then have a decent amount of room here to use the mouse. Kind of cool, I can sit here and draft, run the machine and then when I'm done or once the machine starts cutting all I got to do is lift this up. It comes on and off really easy. All I got to do is lift it up, pull it out of the way so it doesn't get everything wet. And I've already learned my lesson. 
when I'm when I cut I need to swing this out of the way I thought it was a fun project to just kind of get my feet wet see if I could make it work I thought it turned out pretty slick I like that I can move it wherever I want okay so I did want to talk about a couple more things with this machine so far after running the machine a few times you know after burning the freedom fab logo sign and then building this tray so far i can tell you there is a few things that i like slash don't like i love the software software's awesome and i can't say that about every burn table company that i've ever worked with there's been a couple out there that i don't necessarily care for Part of the reason being, I cut my teeth on AutoCAD. When I was in high school, I took drafting classes. When I started college, I was taking drafting classes and architecture classes, and so everything I did was on AutoCAD. I actually like the way AutoCAD runs as far as commands go. I like that you can hit one key and then enter, and that's the command. It makes it very fast. Once you know all the commands, you can draft something up in minutes. It is very user-friendly software. I do like it so far, and I'm just barely scratching the surface, but there are all kinds of really neat features you can do, and I'll try to keep you guys posted as I go with that. I am still figuring out what the most convenient way to cut is, to center my material and all that stuff. It does have a laser pointer on it, and that's supposed to help you line up the plate. The quality has been awesome. It's very user-friendly. Everything I've seen so far has been quality other than and this is one of my gripes the keyboard and the mouse have a cord I think that's absolutely ridiculous nobody wants that's like Stone Age stuff nobody wants to use a keyboard with with a cord on it I went to Walmart today picked up a keyboard and a mouse for thirty dollars if you're buying a machine of this caliber and they send you home with a keyboard and a mouse with a cord I think that's absolutely ridiculous and the funny thing about that is, they actually say that on one of their videos. The technician that's setting the table up, he openly says he does not like that they give you a mouse and a keyboard with a cord, and I completely agree. If someone by chance did happen to watch my video from Kuiki, I would hope that they would listen and chuck the keyboard and the mouse with a cord, supply a $30 cordless keyboard and mouse, and you're gonna make a lot more people happy because they just spent whatever they spent. This one was $48,000. When you spend that kind of money, I would think they could probably spring for a $30 keyboard and mouse to make your life a little more convenient while you're operating the table. It's just a lot more convenient to be able to walk around the table. It's safer because you can actually see what's going on on any side of the table with that keyboard. And if I've got to jog it, then I've got the keyboard in my hand. I can watch it as I jog it and make sure everything's good to go um, the other complaint I have isn't necessarily a quality thing I kind of knew this was going to be the case because I've heard that water tables are messy well it's confirmed they're messy I don't know what you do about it you just try to mitigate it the best you can so when I cut the sign you'll notice I cut it right in the far corner closest to the computer that was a dumb move because as soon as it gets done cutting it always returns to zero well, zero is right in the corner, right next to the computer. So it stopped and it blew water all over the back of the computer and it ran down the side. And then it started dripping on the controller underneath. So there were some lessons learned there. I'm gonna try to cut kind of out here in the middle to try to keep as much water in the pan as possible. And when it's done, once it returns to zero and stops, you can jog it as soon as you want. And so that's what I've started doing. If I'm cutting apart, it returns to zero, and then I hurry and hit jog so that, the, so that the nozzle is over the plate. That way it doesn't sit and spray the water all over. Other than that, I really don't have any gripes yet. And I'll keep you guys posted. If there's things that I don't like, I'll let you know. I am very excited to have the machine. It really opens up your world with what you're capable to do. Saves you time. Time is money. I think it's going to be really good for us. That's gonna wrap up this project. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys can take something from this and use it. And you guys that are in the market, you know, maybe you'll find some things that you like or dislike about this setup that'll help you when you're shopping for yours. So thank you for watching. We appreciate the support. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you on the next one. So 
we'll be able to throw our mud. We'll have to come in with the forklift. We'll have to come in from the fork. And there is, there isn't much. It makes it. Dryers running, computers aired up. Computer. The Video of this, not me. I thought you were getting caught. Why don't you scoot back a little? Scoot back.